Okay, I'm recording. Uh, okay, we will see. Uh, so this is the Yikto conjugation. And this conjugation is very, very important. So I would uh, recommend, not recommend you, I will require you to memorize this conjugation. Sometimes it is very difficult, uh, but if you memorize this conjugation, it will be much easier for you to do in, in the future. Because all other uh, conjugations, like for example, if you need to make an imperative or you need to do a, a infinitive, all those uh, forms are based on this conjugation. So if you know Yiktol, you will know everything else. So that is why it is a must. You need to memorize this one. And uh, uh, this conjugation, Yiktol conjugation, uh, is also called imperfect and is also called prefix conjugation. So in different books, you can find different terminology, but the meaning is the same. So why it is called prefix conjugation? Because you can see that it is formed basically by adding suffixes to the root of the verb. And uh, why it is called imperfect? Because the basic meaning of this paradigm is future. So the action that has not been finished yet. Uh, but it can be also used for many other cases. But for us, we will uh, use it and we will translate it in the sentences as a future tense uh, for, uh, for our convenience. But of course, we will find some other issues when the same conjugation can be used for some, some other tenses. Uh, so how uh, the basic form is yikto. So the, the, the word yikto, it is the form of third masculine singular. Yikto, and it means, uh, we will translate it in, in as a future tense, he will kill. Because we remember that the verb katal means to kill. Tikto is uh, the third feminine singular form, and it will mean it, it means she will kill. And pay attention that the two forms are identical. Tikto, tikto. So uh, she will kill, and you, masculine singular, will kill, have the same form. And only the context will help us to identify which form is implied here. Tikteli, tikteli is uh, the form of uh, you, feminine singular, will kill. And ectol is I will kill, uh, first common uh, singular. In, uh, the, uh, in the plural form, yiktelu, and pay attention, if we have yod in the, as a prefix, so it means that this is the third uh, person. It could be plural or, uh, plural or singular, but this is the third person masculine. Yikte lu, yikto, uh, third uh, masculine. Uh, so uh, yikte lu, it will be they, masculine, mm -hmm. plural, will kill. And tiktolna uh, means uh, they, feminine, plural, will kill. Tikte lu, is you masculine plural will kill and tick tolna uh, you feminine plural uh, will kill so pay attention again that tick tolna and tick tolna two forms are identical for two uh, different persons uh, they feminine plural or you feminine plural so the same form is used for both uh, forms uh, and nikto means we common plural will kill so this is just the basic paradigm and uh, your task is uh, to memorize it so in hebrew you don't need to memorize a lot of paradigms but this two katal and diktol you have to to memorize and if you do it it will be much easier for you in in the future so now uh, about the meaning as i told Yiktol uh, most often uh, will be translated as the future action. So the action that is going to be in the future. Uh, 
But in some cases, uh, it can also uh, express a kind of unfinished action. And it could be uh, unfinished action in, in the past, in the future, or in the present. Uh, so the, uh, the semantic is very, 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 very big of this uh, form. Yes, but as I told you, the most common is uh, the, the, future, the future tense. And we will translate for, for our purposes, we will try to translate it always as, uh, as the future. And now let's try to let's try to translate some of the sentences. For example, this sentence is taken also from the Bible, so it is not uh, an artificial sentence. Uh, do you remember uh, the word shalach? What does it mean? Uh, the verb shalach. It's to send. It's to send. To send. Yes. Okay. Now let's try to analyze. Uh, of course, a ve, a vav here is a conjunction, and we can translate it as and, or then, or whatever. Uh, now we have uh, the verb, and uh, the verb starts with aleph. Aleph, and we need to look at the table. So, can you find uh, this form which starts with aleph? A first person singular? Yes, first person singular. And it means I. Uh, so, ve shlach means, and I will send. And I will send. Okay. Uh, and I will send. What I will send? Sefer. The book. Uh, a book. Yes. In a this book. case, because and I will send a book to the it, king. It doesn't have an article, so in this case, we will say a book. Or it could be in the original, uh, uh, this text is taken from uh, the second book of Kings. Uh, do you remember the story of Naaman? When Naaman came to his king, uh, when he heard the story, uh, that there is a prophet in Israel, so he came to the king of Syria and king of Syria told him, and I will give and I will send Sefer. And suffer in this case means a letter. And I will send a letter to whom? El Melech Israel. Israel. Yes, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. Okay. And I will send a letter or I will send a book, I will send a document to a king of Israel. So uh, you understand? Sorry, yes. Professor. Yes. Yeah, so just just uh, uh, a difference between uh, if you are to translate uh, Melech Israel, uh, can you say that it could be uh, King Israel or King of Israel? There is a difference between the two? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very good, uh, Harry, that you noticed this. Uh, this is a topic that we will study a little bit later. And uh, in Hebrew, uh, the, the, there are no cases, so they don't have uh, nominative, genitive, uh, dative, accusative, uh, they don't have anything like this. But uh, they have a construction and it is called construct, or in Hebrew it is called smichut. And uh, this is a kind of genitive case. Uh, so usually uh, in genitive case uh, or in smichut construction, they, the, the word is a little bit modified. So in this case, uh, the correct translation will be the king of Israel. The king of Israel. Thank you. Yes, uh, because of the word melech, uh, it is a segulate noun and it doesn't change uh, in smichut. So it has the same form. But so far, I tried to avoid giving you an example of uh, smichut, so I don't want to confuse you. But in this case, so if we, is, okay, sorry, professor. So if we say El Melech David, the, the King David, so how do you say that? It will not be smichut. It will be just a, a position. It will be the King David. But okay. it is the King of David. Uh, King of Israel. Okay, thank you. Pastor, Pastor Rejamori, please mute. 
I, I mute him. I muted him already, so don't worry. Uh, so uh, this is clear, yes. And uh, one more issue that you uh, are just going a little bit ahead of time. Uh, so in this case, it will be correct to translate uh, the king of Israel. Although there is no article here, uh, but we will speak about it a little bit later. Uh, because uh, there is only one king of Israel, so that is why it is definite, but it doesn't have a definite article. But this issue we will uh, discuss a little bit later. Uh, okay, so let's continue uh, and Please, let's try to uh, uh, let's try to translate some more and let's try to practice. I have question. Yes, please. please. Yes, uh, I need this uh, that difference to to uh, try to explain to me the difference between the future tense and the 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 imperfect. Okay, so uh, what kind of difference you cannot understand? To how to to differentiate if the verb is to be conjugated in the in the future tense or in the past tense. Uh, so it, it's up. Uh, it depends on the sentence. So if uh, uh, so, for us it's important to translate the verbs. So if we find a, a verb and we can identify and we can identify it as an uh, yiktol. So we will translate it as a future tense, yes. okay? But if we identify the same, uh, the, the, the verb as hatal or perfect, so we will translate it as a past, okay? So for example, in our case, eshlach, uh, it is clear that it is uh, yiktol because it starts with aleph. And uh, this is the form of Yiktol. So this case, we will translate it as a future tense. Okay? But if it was a uh, ve shalachti or shalachti, uh, in this case, it's clear that it is uh, perfect or katal, and we will translate it as past tense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. Actually, this is the same sentence. I just changed the, the verb. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, this is uh, V. So let me go back and you, I will show for you. So you memorize the form. I mean, you just notice what form it is. TV, and let's try to find it on our uh, table. TV. <clears throat> Pay attention to the suffix is hiragiot. Uh, Where can you find uh, the same? Second person feminine you, singular. You to a first female. Yes, this one. Uh, you can see my pointer. Tikte li. Tikte li. It's a second feminine singular. You, uh, feminine singular. So how we we can translate this? You will send a letter to the king of Israel. Okay, very well. You, feminine singular, if I address a woman, you uh, uh, will send a letter to the king of Israel. Very well. Okay. Ve nichtov et hasafer el hamelech Israel. Ve nichtov. So let's go back and let's try to find it here. We are first person a plural. Yes, we. Uh, first uh, person plural. Nick Toll is we. Uh, so how we will translate it? We will write. And we will write the letter. We will write. Yeah. Yeah, the we will king write. of 
uh, uh, the letter to, to the king of Israel. Very well. Vetikht Vu at Hasafer El Melech Israel. And they will and they will not uh, okay, they wait, will wait, write. Wait, 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 wait. Just find it here. Tichtevu. 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 You. You. Second person, masculine plural. Yes, yes. And you. Yes, here. This is the form. Tichtevu. You, masculine plural. You, masculine plural, will write a letter. Yeah. So it means you in plural, masculine. You will write a letter to the king of Israel. Okay. Vetichtovna. Vetichtovna. And let me go back. It can be you, second person feminine plural, or they. Third person yes, feminine very plural. well, very well. So uh, two forms are identical. It could but be it's either... probably the second one. I mean, the first one, the the, the second person feminine plural. Uh, second person, Tiktona, and here they mm -hmm. feminine. The same forms uh, are two forms are identical. Uh, so in our case, uh, both uh, variants are possible. So we cannot tell that this one is correct, this one is not correct. Uh, but usually in the sentence or in the context, you can understand which one is implied. Is it you or is it they? So if it, if it is they, so usually uh, they will, will be provided by a subject. Like, uh, uh, let, uh, let us do like this. Oh, I cannot, oh, just a minute, please. Uh, for example, so how can how can you translate it in this case? Nashim, what is Nashim? Women. Women. So how, how will you translate uh, the, the entire sentence, the whole sentence? And the women will write the, uh, the, the letter of the king the letter to to the king of israel very well and the women will write a letter to the king of israel uh, yes so uh, we need to understand which sentence is or which uh, option is correct only by the context or uh, if there is some indicator okay and the last one it seems to me this is the last one. Oh, yes this is the last one Remember the title of this uh, paradigm. Yiktov. And here we have the Yiktov. So let's, let's try to find it here. The first person singular. Not first person. It's third person, uh, masculine singular. Yes, very well. Uh, the third and person, masculine he, singular, yikto, yikto. <laughs> Here, you can find it, yes? You can see it, yikto, he. So we will translate it 
and he he will, he will write, write he will write the a letter, letter to the king of israel. to the king of israel uh, so uh, one uh, thing that I would like also to emphasize, so do you see the theme uh, vowel here is holy. Yich tov, yish mor, yim loch, and uh, in many, many other cases. But sometimes uh, you can find the theme vowel patach, like here, eshlach, eshlach. So just don't be just don't confuse and uh, this is the same yikto but uh, some verbs have different theme vowel okay and now we come uh, to one of the most important uh, parts of our today's presentation and this is a vayikto a vayikto paradigm uh, so this paradigm uh so i understand that in the beginning it could be confusing for, for some of them uh, but uh, uh, this paradigm probably is one of the most common especially in narrative because uh, it is also could be called as narrative tense like talk so what is the uh, okay first of all let's try to understand the morphology of this uh, of this paradigm so this paradigm is uh, used, uh, is formed from the yikto, and uh, let's see here, here is my pointer. So do you see yikto, and we need to add vav to yikto. So it's better to put it uh, vice versa. Okay, let me let me do it like this. Yeah, Hebrew is always very tricky, especially when you combine uh, Latin and Hebrew uh, Hebrew characters in the same line. So it's always tricky. Yeah, I was able to do this. Yes, uh, so uh, vav plus yikto, we will have vayikto form. But pay attention that vav should have uh, a vowel patach, or uh, in sometimes it will it will have comments. Yes, and another another indicator of this paradigm is a dagesh forte in the prefix or performative letter so this uh, dagesh forte here dagesh forte here and this patach or kamets will tell you that this is a vayikto uh, paradigm and all the verbs uh, will be formed like this uh, vav plus yikto but in this case uh, this one uh, yud or any any prefix uh, letter will have a dagesh forte okay and the meaning of the vayikto uh, sometimes uh, it is also called vav so vav in this case reverse the meaning of the verb from the future to the past and vayikto will be would be also the past tense so now you know two past tenses uh, one is katal and another one is vayikto. Katal and vayikto. Both tenses are past tenses. Okay? Uh, so uh, when vayikto is used, vayikto, it is, uh, as I told you, like most common, uh, most common tense in the narrative. For example, if you tell a story, and you uh, narrates about the events which are uh, follow which follow each other. For example, 
I woke up in the morning, I prayed, I had my breakfast, uh, I went to, to my office, uh, I had a class and uh, so on and so forth. So when our events, when the events are following, following each other, in this case, a wife toll is used. And most probably it is in the narrative because in the narrative, we usually uh, describe the events in, uh, in the sequence. So is it clear? Now, uh, okay, now let's try to, to, to translate the same sentences, just some of them, and uh, let's try to, to, to see how it works. So we translated, uh, do you remember, uh, okay, this one, where uh, tov. So in this case, it is not a vector. It is just a vav plus imperfect. And uh, do you see there is no dagesh here? That is why we, we will translate it as a future. Uh, but in this case, pay attention that uh, it is already vector. And uh, in this case, we need to translate it as the past tense. Va yich tov. Yichtov is a he, and this uh, you remember that this is a he, and we need to translate it as and he wrote uh, the letter to the king of Israel, and he wrote. Okay, so is it clear so far? Yes. Okay, very well. Yes, it was. Uh, let's start to translate this one. Uh, pay attention, Waf again has uh, Waf again has Patah and there is Dagesh here. Uh, so this Dagesh is Dagesh Forte, Vat Tichtov, Vat Tichtov, and this is like tall form. So in order to, to, to find this form, we need to go back to our uh, paradigm. Can you find it? It's true, Prof. Um, yes, third two person forms are identical. Singular. It could and be she or uh, you. Person, mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Masculine yes. singular. So in this case, we need to translate it. We can translate both ways. We can translate as, and she wrote the a book or the letter to the king of Israel. Or we can translate, and you, masculine singular, wrote a letter to the king of Israel. So, but so far, do you understand the difference between yiktol and vayiktol? Yiktol is the future, vayiktol is the past. Okay? Sorry, yes, Professor. Bro. Yes. Uh, so in the form vayiktol, do we, do we translate also the, the, the word and or not? Uh, okay, for our, uh, sometimes uh, in some translations, like Bible translations, it is not translated. But for our technical purposes, let's translate it as, and uh, she wrote, okay? But the question is very okay. good. Okay, professor. This is the question of the debates among the scholars. So should we translate it as uh, always as and or not? And in some uh, Bible translations, they do not uh, follow this one. But in some, especially King James Version, you will find that they do this. Okay, this one. And now I need to explain you something. Uh, because, uh, do you see, you cannot find Dagesh in the performative, in the prefix. But Aleph cannot take Dagesh, because the Aleph is a guttural letter. So that is why, because Aleph is a good role letter, in Hebrew there is a concept of compensation. And because uh, Aleph cannot uh, be doubled, something else should be doubled or should, uh, should be longer than usual. And in this case, what they do, uh, you can see that usually they have Patach, Patach as a Vyakto uh, indicator. But in this case, patah is a lengthened and he is transformed to kametz because kametz is longer than patah. So this is to compensate 
the absent of the absence of Dagesh Forte in the first uh, letter, not the first letter, but in the performative or in the prefix. Va ech tov. But in this case, it is again a vital form. How, we, how can we translate it? And I wrote. And I wrote. Okay. Uh, read to the king of Israel. Yes, the book or the letter to the king of Israel. So it looks like you got it. Okay, one more example. Sorry, Prof. Yes. Uh, yes, you indicated that um, this one here is a Gamesi at all, isn't it? At the beginning. Again, again, again. I'm saying you indicated at the beginning of uh, this verb here, it's a Gamesi at all, isn't it? Oh. Wa Exactly. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't understand your question. Can you uh, can you repeat it again, you, please? You, you indicated that since the aleph does not get a um, dagest. Yes. Therefore, the gamesh has to uh, be lengthened. Pata. Yes, we have. A, a, Pata, okay. Yes. Patah should be lengthened, and that is why patah is transformed to kametz. Va okay. ek tov. Uh, isn't it possible also to confuse it with the, uh, a swallowed uh, letter in an article? No, uh, article, do you see, article can never be added to the verb, never. Okay. Because article could be added only to nouns or to adjectives. So that is why uh, article cannot be, you cannot confuse it with the article. Now, article also could be added to the participles, but you will never confuse it uh, here. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's impossible. Okay, uh, uh, did I answer your question? Yes, Prof. Okay, so. Uh, next one, and it seems to me, yes, this is the, uh, the, uh, the last one. Va nich tov. And remember that uh, nun has dagesh forte, and uh, this dagesh forte in nun and patach uh, with va indicates that this is va ik tov. So how can we translate it? And we wrote. And we wrote. And we wrote. Okay, very well, very well. So it looks like you uh, got this topic. Now, this is uh, the book of uh, Genesis, chapter one. And just I highlighted for you how many times uh, the vital form is used here. Vayomer Elohim. Avayar uh, Elohim, Vayavdel, where is it? Uh, yeah, Vayavdel, uh, Vayikra, Vayomar again, Vayavdel, Vayhi, uh, Vayhi is here as well. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, all of these issues are examples of Vayiktov. And uh, this is the uh, uh, the account of uh, creation. And uh, starting from verse three, it uh, tells us that these are uh, consequent, uh, it's a sequence of events. For example, Vayomer means, and the Lord and God said. Yehi is a kind of imperative or is a light. So, and God said, let it be light. And light, uh, or oh, Vayhi is also kind of, uh, Vayhi is a special uh, word, and in our class we will discuss it uh, today. And uh, uh, light uh, became or came to existence. Uh, Vayar, and so, 
God and God saw at Haor the light he told that it is good. Vayavdel batal, this verb is to divide, uh, to divide. Uh, by the way, one more thing that I would like to emphasize. In a yiktol, uh, there is a change of the dagesh. So if, for example, the verb is badal in yiktol form, uh, dagesh forte, or no, dagesh lene in the first letter disappears. And that is why we have katav, but yiktov. So kav is changed to uh, h, and b would be changed to v. Uh, for example, the word bana in, uh, in Hebrew to build, in yiktol it will be yivne. So b is changed to v. So, and uh, this is the common. Uh, Phenomenon in, in Hebrew. Okay, Badal means to divide. And uh, God divided Ben between Gaor, between light, Uven, and between Gahoshech. Hoshech is darkness. Vaikra, Kara means to call or to name. And Elohim, God, called uh, or light. Yom and Yom is day, and La Hoshek Kara is a perfect Laila, and Laila is night. You know it. Why he Erev Erev is evening. Why he again uh, Boker Boker is uh, morning. Yom Echad Yom uh, is day day one or day first. Why Yomer Elohim Yehi Arakia. Betoch Hamayim. Mayim, you know, this is water. Betoch is in the midst. And Rakia is uh, like a permanent. It is translated sometimes. Okay, uh, so I will not translate uh, further on. So you understood the idea. So Vyactual is used when we have a sequence of events. And Vyactual is very, very. Uh, is the form that occurs very, very often in the Hebrew Bible. So also, I would like to pay your attention to some tricky verbs. And these are the verbs with the third gay. We will speak about these verbs next week uh, a little bit more. But today, I would like just to emphasize one thing, that these verbs, when they form the white to form, the third hey, the third hey, in the third person, only in the third person, but sometimes in other persons as well, but in the third person, uh, this hey will disappear, will, uh, it will drop out. So, for example, asa is to do, and ya asa is the Im imperfect or yikto form, he will do. But if you if you make the vital form where vital form will will be via us, and he did or and he made, and do you see in this case we have vav, we have yod, and yod is a prefix, and after that we have only two uh, consonants of the root because the last one hey just uh, just disappeared. So and it is a very very common phenomenon for the uh, third hay roots that sometimes the hay just disappears. So you uh, should expect this kind of behavior of this verse. The same, ra'a is to see, ir e is he will see, and vaya, uh, vayar, and he saw. So you can see a last hay again disappeared. Or Allah to go up. And uh, you can see that in this case, the same via al and, uh, and he went up. So the last hay disappeared. We need to remember about, about this. Uh, okay, uh, do we have any questions so far? If you don't have questions, yes. How are you? 
so if you don't have questions, uh, I'm going to start another presentation, just a brief. Uh, we will not go through all this presentation, uh, but as I understand, it is important for us to practice a little bit uh, the translations. But before we, uh, before this presentation, uh, there are some, yes. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. First, first of all, let me apologize. I've, I've entered the class when it's too late. There is this internet technicalities. I was okay. even not able to finish my questions for the last uh, mundo. Okay. So I don't know how you can assist me so that uh, I, uh, I, I get a time to answer some questions. So don't worry about the last uh, module because it is still opened. And if you are not able to, uh, to finalize all quizzes, you can still do this. Uh, so all current quizzes, they are always open. So you can do them at any moment. And module quiz, I made a mistake. So I, I put a wrong deadline uh, and I removed the deadline. So you can do it until now, the module quiz. Okay. So don't worry yeah, about thank that. you very much yeah so yeah. now uh, yeah uh, do you have any other questions uh, if you don't uh, let me uh, just show to you this uh, document actually these are the lecture notes for this class and one more expression that is also important this expression is why he uh, why he uh, usually translated as and it happened and it happened and uh, why he uh, you can find it very often in the hebrew bible even sometimes uh, some books of the bible start with the same expression why he and uh, you can translate it and it happened but what is the uh, special thing about this expression why he why he doesn't have a, a, a form I mean, it is an expression that doesn't have a person, gender, or number. And that is why it is not agreed in a person, gender, and number with the rest of the sentence. So you can say, uh, like for example, why he but who? At is the time, and it happened at that time. Or why he ahar hadivarim hale, and it happened after. Uh, these things, Vahi Yamim Ravim, and it happened uh, like uh, many days happened, or we can translate it after many days. So uh, this expression, and as I told you, it is not. Uh, do you see Yamim is plural? Yamim is plural, but Vahi doesn't change because Yamim is plural. Uh, so it doesn't have any uh, characteristic like person, gender, and number. And as I told you, this expression is very, very, very common. And the verb haya, so it comes from the verb haya, and verb haya means to be, uh, but uh, it looks like it, uh, uh, it was changed in the time, so it is not, uh, it is not, uh, uh, connected to uh, to what Bahaya anymore, but it it has a uh, independent meaning. Uh, particle key, you already know this particle, and uh, we will uh, use it a little bit more in this uh, in this uh, uh, lesson. And and the particle key uh, most often it can be translated as a vet uh, because or sometimes if or when yes uh, like for example that rare uh, and uh, the woman uh, so key uh, that adds is a tree uh, the tree is good uh, and you will see some other examples like this and one more word, uh, expression that i would like to uh, discuss with you and pay attention to the, this uh, to this expression this expression is karat berit uh, karat actually uh, means to cut and karat berit is an idiomatic expression which means to make a covenant so this idiomatic expression derived from the tradition to make a covenant when people cut 
an animal in two pieces and they walked uh, between those parts uh, of the animals and usually they pronounce an oath and you can find uh, the description of this tradition in the bible and uh, actually not only in the bible but it is a very prominent uh, tradition and a very popular way to make a covenant in the ancient mm -hmm. near east uh, you can find many many examples of the same tradition as people followed the same tradition in the ancient near east and in the bible we can find it in genesis chapter 15 when uh, god decided to make a covenant with uh, abraham he used the same tradition abraham uh, took animals and he cut them in two pieces and we can read in the genesis chapter 15 as god was walking between those uh, parts of the animals and he pronounced a promise or oath that he will uh, give um, the land to abraham and that Abraham will have a lot of descendants. So we can see that this is uh, uh, the expression karat berit comes from this, from this tradition. Uh, but uh, when we have this expression karat berit, we will not translate it to cut a covenant, but we will translate it to make a covenant. Okay? So karat berit means to make a covenant. So is it clear? It's clear, bro. Okay, so very okay. well. And now uh, let me change the presentation. I will just stop it. And I will start a new one. Excuse me. So now let's try to practice. And, and this one is from the Bible. And we need to, uh, so this is from the uh, root, um, the first verb. But first of all, I would like to ask you, can you find the verb and can you identify the form of the verb? So even if you do not know the, the root, the meaning of the root, you can still find the verb. Usually verb has three consonants, but also it could have either prefix or suffix. So please, I try to find uh, try to find the root I have I have very well I have so uh, let me point it so this is the root I have and uh, what uh, uh, have so what is this uh, what kind of form is it vector vector very well so we can see waf we can see patah we can see tough and we can see uh, daggish. So you can see some irregularity here uh, because this is uh, the verb with the first uh, guttural. And we will speak about those verbs uh, next, uh, uh, next lesson. Uh, but this is, uh, it is true, this is the vehicle form. Now, uh, can you please identify so you have the root of course you don't know the meaning yet but you can identify the form i mean uh, the person and uh, the gender and the number of this of this root what a half so it could be three third person feminine singular or two very well very well two, two person masculine singular. yes so a half actually do you remember in the book of jeremiah uh, they have a, about Ohava, Ohava, Agava, and Ahaliva, two daughters or two sisters. And Ahav actually means to love. Okay, so now uh, how can we translate it? And you have. 
again, again, and 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 Irav Mikar, the daughter of Sor. Okay. The last one is the David, but the uh, David, yes. De David, correct, David. So how uh, can you put everything together? And David love Mikar, the daughter of Saul. No, 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 no. Okay, so let's uh, let's start from the verb, from the verb. What a uh, half. So we said that this verb is either you, uh, masculine, singular, or she, uh, feminine, singular. So which one is better here? So it's she now. She. And who is she? Mikhail. 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 Yeah. So Mikhail um, is she. Mm. So how can we translate it? And uh, we put a subject on the first place. And Mikhail. And Mikhail loved David. Uh, and Mikhail, the daughter mm. of Saul, loved David. Yes. And Mikhail, the daughter of Saul, loved, loved David. Loved David. Okay, very well. So do you see this is from the Bible? So the same root I have, and uh, root I have actually means uh, true love. You already know it. Uh, uh, you will have the problem with translating um, um, this one. Where is my pointer? This one, probably. I will help you with this. Uh, but uh, 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 can you? Oh, I forgot to put one vowel here. Uh, this today uh, is supposed to be here. So, uh, can you find? Uh, can you guess what it means? It means uh, I, it. It can be read as Esther. Esther, Esther. Esther is the name. Okay. Can you try to translate? And the king loved Esther. Yes. Okay. Can you can you read the rest of the sentence? So Mika, uh, what is the meaning for Mika? Mikal Hanashi. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you see? This is a compound word, and it has like two parts. Me is from mean. This is ah, a preposition. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this one all is called. Called. Yeah. Okay. Uh, between all the the, okay. the women. Uh, no, not between. It is um, among. Ah, uh, among. Yeah. Comparative. Among. It is a comparative. Uh, uh, it is a comparative, uh, uh, how to say, uh, so it's better to translate it and king and the king loved Esther better than all uh, the wives. Or, or better than. So, yes. Okay. All the women. All the women, yeah. Women, women, yeah, correct. Okay. So just just here, uh, Professor, uh, uh, why do do we translate uh, all the women and not all of? Yeah, both ways are possible. Actually, uh, the difference mm -hmm. between these two um, issues are so minor, so you can translate uh, both ways. In English, we okay. usually do not say all of the women or women. So uh, that that is, but uh, th this way is also possible. Uh, it is also uh, connected to the construct, and I will explain it to you a little bit later in several lessons. Okay. Uh, here, uh, this one is also construct, and this means bene ha Elohim means uh, the sons of God sons of God. Uh, 
And uh, can you find the, the verb here? It's to see, no? Yes, very well. Ra. Yeah. Ra, to see. Uh, because it is the third, it is Vaikto, and you remember in Vaikto, final he disappears. So in this case, we can see that it is the word to see, Ra'a. Okay, how can you translate it? This is also from the Bible. Yeah, and the sons of God loved the sons of men. So, it's so. So, and the, the, the sons of God, it's true. So, the daughter of men. The daughters of men. He is that. Very beautiful. Yes, Hannah is a they. Uh, they saw that they are beautiful or beautiful. they are good. Yes, to what? Okay, very well, very well. Uh, okay, so here, Noah, 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 the proper name. The son No, 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 Ben is not a son here, but pay attention to this, and this uh, word. Son of Noah. It's a, the verb bana. Yes, very well. This is the verb bana, which means to build. And because it's this is the verb with the final hey, so it should be uh, the final hey disappears. And how can we translate it? Hey. And they build. Build the altar. Very well, very well, Pastor Naema. Who built? This is the proper name, Noah. Means Noah. And Noah built the altar. Noah. Uh, how can you read this one? So this one should be read. Uh, now this is a tetragrammaton do you see and tetragrammaton yes they will never pronounce as Yahweh or so they will always pronounce it as Adonai so that is why we need to read it and Noah built an altar for the Lord or I will read it in Hebrew, Vayeven Noach Mizbach Ladonai. So you need to read it Ladonai. And they will never read uh, Yahweh as Yahweh, but they will always read it as Adonai. Okay. Okay, may I ask somebody just to read this, uh, just to read this uh, verse. Not to translate, but just to read. Zayven. Why you went? The first letter is what? Why you went? Why you went? 
Farewell. Mitzvah. Misbeach. Mitzvah. Oh, no. Misbeach. Misbehar. No, Misbeach. Do you see this is a patach? It's called patach furtivum. And this patach should be read before the consonant. Vaivan sham misbeach. Continue, please. Ladonai. Very well. Ladonai. La Adonai. Ladonai, correct. Ladonai. Yeah. And uh, this one. La Akira. Waikra. 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 The shame, the shame, the shame, the shame, Adonai. Adonai, very well. So you got it. So every time when you have a treasure grammaton, you need to read it as Adonai, not anything else. So, okay, now let's try to translate it. And do you see it is very similar to the previous one? So the first word, Vaivan. And one more thing that I need to tell you about mm -hmm. the Vaiktol. Vaiktol will always, uh, is always placed in the beginning of the sentence. So this is the rule. If we have Vaiktol uh, in the sentence, it should be always be uh, on the first place in the sentence. It can never be somewhere in the middle, but always a sentence will start with Vaik Tol. So that is why it's very easy to uh, locate it and to translate it. Is it, and he built an altar to the Lord and he called upon the name of the Lord? Very well, very well. So Vayivan Sham, Sham is there. This one is there. Oh, sorry. Uh, and he built there an altar for the Lord, and Kara means call, and he called, Shem is the name, uh, and he called the name of the Lord. Yeah, sometimes uh, pay attention to the preposition. Prepositions in Hebrew are very, like in English, very idiomatic, and sometimes uh, for example, in English, we do not use preposition in this case, but they, but they can use a preposition. So, but it will come later on. Okay, uh, shama uh, means to listen or to hear. There are several uh, proper names here, like for example, uh, Yitro. Uh, do you remember who was Yitro? Who Yitro was? Was it Jetro? Uh, the father-in-law of Moses. Yes, Jetro, this is the father-in-law uh, of Moses. And uh, Midian, Midian, this is the name of the tribe or of the nation, Midianites. Everything else and uh, Shama, you know Shama? Shama is to listen. So now you can try to translate it. And he, he listened. Okay, very well. Who, who he? And they listened. Not yes. they. Wait, wait, wait. Not they. Uh, if we had a, a they, we would have u in the end. But there is no u. Mm -hmm. So it means, it means he. And he listened. And when we have he listened, we need to find maybe there is a subject for, for this he. And Jetros and Jetros listen. Okay, very well. And Jetro listen. 
to the priest. Listen. Oh, yeah, but we need, do you see Cohen. this one? Jetro, uh, Cohen, Madian, or Midian. This is uh, one construction, subject construction, so we cannot divide it. So how can we translate it? And Jetro, the, the priest Midian of Midian, priest. or Midian yes. priest. Yes, very well. And Jetro, the Midianite priest or the priest of Midian. Let uh, continue, continue. Shama is heard. And Jetro, the priest of Midian or Madianites, listen. heard or listen. <laughs> Et kol asher asa Elohim le Moshe. And Jephro, the priest of Midian, listened or that did very well. The, the God, God of Moses. Uh, everything, uh, Lamet. Do you remember this Lamet? Lamet could be translated uh, yeah. as four or uh, four. To Moses. Yeah, two, two Moses or four Moses. So, and Jetro, uh, the priest of Midianites, listen or heard everything uh, that God did for Moses. So, this is from the Bible. Do you see? You are able now to translate some verses from the Bible. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is I found the mistake here. The Lord is me. So this is a mistake. Yeah, it should be like this, supposed to be like this. And the people did not listen to the call of the of the uh, prophets. Yes, call is voice. Yes. Okay. The voice of the prophet. Uh, can you repeat again? Can you repeat again? And the people did not listen. Stop! 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 So look, uh, look carefully at this verb, yishme'u. What form is this? Is it a vectral? No, oh, no, it's not. It's not. So in this case, how it's shall future. we translate it? So it's future. So we put it as a future mm. tense. And they will oh. not listen. Okay, so can you repeat it please in future? And the people will not listen to the voice of the prophet. Yes, and the people will not listen to the voice of the prophet. Okay, so uh, our time is running, uh, we are running out of time because very soon we, uh, the uh, week of revival will start and I cannot... Uh,
uh, take your time. So now let me one more one more case. Oh. Uh, let me. So it's another version of the presentation. Okay, so probably I just uh, uh, I, I forgot to to <clears throat> to keep uh, to save the presentation. Uh, I'll find it later on. So I hope uh, now you uh, you understood the the topic about yiktol and vyiktol. And uh, during this week, uh, what you are supposed to do, I will show to you now uh, the screen of our assignment for this week. Uh, as usual, you will have four uh, current quizzes, four current quizzes, and um, uh, you will have uh, the quiz, or not special, but uh, something that you didn't have uh, didn't uh, have before uh, so this our section today section and one of the quizzes will be the missing word uh, so you will have translate the sentence but you will have only like five uh, sentences to translate uh, but uh, what I uh, um, also provided for you, this one missing word, and I will show how it looks like. So there is a sentence and one word is missing. One word is missing. So your task is to provide uh, a word that uh, will fit the context best. Okay? And of course, in order to do this, you will need to you will need to to translate the sentence otherwise you will be just guessing okay and uh, you okay you will do it uh, at home and uh, also uh, you will have the vocabulary quiz translate the verb is the same as we did before uh, but you will have or somebody already tried uh, you will have uh, the same and you will need to provide uh, you will need to provide a pronoun like tish uh, oh, this is a mistake here. I need to, to correct it. Tish me e, tish me e. Uh, for example, you. You, feminine singular. Uh, will. Uh, listen. Okay. Let us see. Oh, wow, do you see? Even I made a mistake. Okay, I will try to, to understand what is going on here. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, you understand your assignment? I suppose that you have to put the number two. You don't Maybe put it. I, I will, I will yeah. go to <laughs> and I will see what is wrong. But actually, uh, yeah. UFC also should be feminine singular. UFS also should be correct. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if you don't have any questions so far, 
Uh, just, just for the vocabulary, Professor, you don't put yeah, it. I will send it to you. I will send it to you. Okay. 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 Uh, just immediately, I will send it to you, and I hope that uh, Harry will provide it for us as soon as possible. Thank you, Harry, very much, and I really appreciate what you are doing for this class. Professor. Yes. Yeah, I, I had a, a challenge in terms of uh, the duration of the mood mood uh, quiz. Again, again, again. Uh, what challenge? Um, I'm indicating that um, the duration itself of the Moodle 